Check, check. Cool. <coughs> Alrighty. Is that clear? Cool. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Wong, and I'm the founder of Trike, Malaysia's first and so far only uh, sharing e scooter service provider. And today I'm going to be talking about this topic, singularity. And honestly, uh, when I first started to think about it, I was struggling to think about how to relate this topic to my personal stories. But I'll give it a shot. And as with every good engineer, the first thing you do when you're faced with a problem is you define it. So, what is singularity? If you look at the study of gravity, a singularity is a region in space-time in which tidal gravitational forces become infinite. Sounds too complicated. <laughs> if you look at the study of mathematics, a singularity is a point at which a given mathematical object is not defined or not well behaved, like me. <laughs> if you look at society, a singularity is being alone forever and ever and ever. <laughs> but my favorite meaning for singularity comes from the study of systems where a singularity is a small thing that can, uh, can have a very large effect given the right initial conditions and parameters. And to help illustrate this, here are two charts showing the growth of our universe and the growth of Google. Do you see any similarities? Both experience sudden and exponential growth. And within a short period of time, what seemed like a small rate of change initially led to an explosion of uh, expansion but infinite as they are they all seem to have started from a single point in time a single moment a single event when at first there was nothing and suddenly there was everything thirteen point eight billion years ago within a tiny patch of space no larger than an electron highly energetic materials turn gravity upside down and repulse each other in every which way possible. And within a fraction of a second, our universe grew to 200 light years in diameter. And just like that, just like that, within a second, our stars, our moon, our planets, and our galaxies came to be. Similarly, what started out as an idea built by two guys in a garage is now and today the world's most popular, most visited website in the world. Larry Page and Sergey Brin's service has become so popularized that the name of their service has replaced the word in the English dictionary. Today, people Google something 77,000 times, 77, times a second. That translates to 2.4 trillion searches per year. Just to help put, back, put that into perspective, there are only three and a half billion people in the world today with access to the internet, which means there are about a thousand searches per person per year. I don't even brush my teeth that many times. <laughs> it's amazing to think what two guys have achieved in such a short amount of time. It's amazing to think that two guys in a garage with the right idea at the right time can have such a profound impact on our world within, within a single lifetime. They are a true shining example of a singularity. But while the effects of the singularity are clear, what is less clear is the who, the when, the why, the how, and the what are the singularities for each of these events. What happened before the Big Bang? How did these energetic materials even come to be? Where did the, Google, where did the idea for Google that would change the world come from? Who sparked it? Where did it come from? Will we ever know? And even if we did, we would then ask the question, where did that come from? A wise philosopher, a Roman philosopher once said, nothing can come from nothing. In other words, in simpler words, something always comes from something. <laughs> so for today, I want to tell you a little bit about something you may be familiar with. Trike. On January 15th, 2019, a local company was incorporated and with the support of some family, friends, Iskandar team and a few others, 
the wheels were turning for what would eventually be the launch of the first of Malaysia's first sharing electric scooter service right here in Edu City, Iskandar Putri. Fast forward a few months and Trike has grown from a group of seven prototypes in an office to a fleet of 70 scooters and now an army of 200 with the rights to operate in three cities and three universities across Malaysia. All along the way, we've had the opportunity to meet with some amazing people from schools, from communities, from the government, travelers from abroad. We've had the opportunity to make old friends and new friends, to meet robots, to meet ex-politicians, <laughs> and businessmen. We've also had the opportunity to meet the good, the bad, both of which are in this picture, and the ugly. Yes, that is the snake on our handlebar. And through all that, we have not yet achieved what Google has achieved today. We are nowhere near having the same amount of impact that Google has on the world. But what we have done is accumulated 60,000 rides, over 20,000 users, and 165,000 kilometers traveled. 165,000 kilometers of carbon-free green miles traveled. That's four times, that you, that's enough distance to wrap around the world four times over. It's not much, but we're proud of it, and there's a lot left to do. But before we move further, perhaps now is a good time to ask ourselves, where did it all start? What was our singularity? And what one event, single moment, or point in time did try come from? Well, it would be 15 January 2019, right? When the company was started. No, maybe let's look a little bit further back. Perhaps December 2018, the first time a trike prototype was activated on the sidewalks in Monkara. No, maybe a little further back, October 2018. I was back in Malaysia after working and studying in the US for six years, and I had to make a decision of the direction I wanted to choose in life. Would I go back to a full-time job? Or would I try to solve a real-world problem and perhaps build something out of it? Well, traffic congestion stood out and I got to work immediately. But if we go back even further, May 2018, Charlotte, North Carolina. As I leave my apartment to cross the street and buy some coffee, I noticed some shared scooters along the street. Uh, at that point in time, I didn't know what it was. And so I walk up curiously, downloaded an app, and within a few seconds, I was zipping through the city on what I thought was a kid's toy. I was immediately in love. Going back even further, September 2017, Indianapolis, Indiana. As I packed my last box in my living room and threw it into my car, I was ready for a nine hour trip that would take me from Indiana to North Carolina. I was bitter that I did not get my work visa that year, but I was hopeful that the following year, the final year, would be my chance. It would be a new destination, a new environment, a new challenge, but I was ready. Little did I know that would be, this would be the last time I would see Indiana. Going back even further, August 2012, Kuala Lumpur International Airport. I am zooming away to the land of opportunity for what would be the most challenging three years of my life. USA, here I come. And if I go back even further, July 15, 1991, I was brought into this world by the strongest, bravest woman alive, and my dear mother is completely unaware of the roller coaster ride that lay ahead. Do you see where I'm going with this? Like the search for the beginning of the universe, and like the search for the number of decimals that lie behind, uh, behind the number pi, it is impossible to find the end. Where we are today in our lives, in our relationships, in our careers, is a combination of an endless number of individual seemingly small, insignificant events. Any of them, under the right initial conditions, under the right parameters, have the potential to create monumental effects. I believe that that single, special moment does not exist. Just like a team is built by a group of highly, highly competent people, our lives are built by a string of continuous, connected moments and not individual and discrete events. My biggest advice to you today is to be aware of these moments. Lightning strikes in our lives more times than we know it, and every single seemingly small or insignificant occurrence in your life could be an opportunity of a lifetime. Every point 
could be just the tip of a much, much larger iceberg, just waiting for you to explore. And by being aware, that doesn't mean you have to go and do yoga, go and meditate, go and get lost in some jungle to find yourself. No, it's much, much simpler. Being aware just means to be present and intentional in everything that you do on a daily basis. To ask yourself questions in all of your actions, because what that does is it forces you to think. And when you think, it locates you in time and space, into here and now. Ask yourself simple questions like, can it be better? Can it be faster? Could it be cheaper? Apply this to your daily life, your daily interactions, your routines and your chores. And if the answer is yes, then you've taken the first of many small steps toward what, towards what could be a potentially large future for you and the society. All of our stories have started, and just like the flow of time, it will continue to go on with or without you, whether you like it or not. Each passing year, month, week, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond, microsecond, so on, and so on, and so on, with the right initial conditions and the right parameters, could be the start to an infinite future. Every moment of your life could be a singularity. So stop waiting for the right moment, or the first step, or the right feeling. The time is now. So wake up, look around, ask questions, and go and do something. Because something always comes from something. Thank you.